Hello YouTubers and welcome to another Doctor Who episode review. Today I'm looking at Silver Nemesis, the 25th anniversary story starring Sylvester McCoy. Uh, with me today I have a special guest, it's my brother Jonathan, who's uh, a big Sylvester McCoy fan and he's going to join me in our discussion of this interesting story. Uh, so, first off, Sylvester McCoy is your doctor, isn't he? Certainly is, yeah. Grew up with him. Yeah. So, where old were you when you first sort of got into Doctor Who? Um, with McCoy? I would have been six years old. Oh, I thought you were younger than that. Was I? I don't know. <laughs> when, did, when, when did someone 86? start? 86? Wasn't he? No, was he 87? 87? Yeah. So, I was in five. Five, yeah. Okay. So, or well, five or six, depending yeah. on how late into the year it was. I remember Time of the Rani. Yeah. Yeah. Just to start things off, mm. in my last video I mentioned that I was going to be reviewing this story. Yeah. And I said that it's not very good. I agree. Uh, and general fan consensus is that this story is pretty crap. Uh, but I was very surprised to see how many people actually came along and said, actually I like Silver Nemesis, I think mm -hmm. it's a good story, blah 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 blah. Uh, which I was surprised and I'd like to know why you think it's a good story, lifts below. Um, but we're just going to discuss our issues with the story. Uh, and when we watched this together, what was that, a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, about two weeks ago. Took a few notes. So uh, the notes are going to be the basis of the review. The story is, like I said, it's a 25th anniversary story. Um, it's season 25, uh, yeah. obviously. Um, and it's uh, a the third story of that season. Yeah. Uh, and it's a good season, isn't it? You've yeah, got overall. Remembrance of the Daleks. Good start us off yeah, with. Very good story. Excellent story. Then we've got Happiness Patrol. Yeah. That's a good story. Good story. Then you have this. Then you have Greatest Show in the Galaxy, which is another good story. Yeah. So it's sort of the, the only sort of poor story yeah. in what is actually a very good season. So with, you know, being s the silver anniversary, they thought, well, let's put the Cybermen in it because it's silver. The basis for the story is that once upon a time, there was a statue made of a living Gallifreyan metal called... Validium. Validium, well done. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, um, that, uh, now I get, I'm confused already, yeah, so you might it, have to explain it to me. It is rather confusing. Um, isn't it that the statue was in the hands of Lady Painfort back in the whenever, yeah. and then the Doctor launched it into space to come back every 25 years? Correct. Uh, and basically, in this story, Lady Painfort uh, comes back from whatever it is, 1600s. 1600s, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Um, comes back, sure. comes to the future, uh, to try and get the Nemesis statue when it arrives on Earth in 1986. No, 88. Yeah, it's 88. Isn't yeah. It? Um, and along with her, we have a group of neo Nazis. Led by whatever his name is, Fluderly, um, what's his <laughs> name? <laughs> Hans Ruber, or whatever his yeah, name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some German bloke. Uh, and then we have the Cybermen as well coming in. So there's a lot going on. Hmm. So from the start, one it's a of bit the, too much, really. It's, it's too much. Too many bits and pieces yeah. going together, I think. And that's the problem. You've got too much crap going yeah. on. It's one of those stories. Uh, and because it's only a three parter, you know, it's just yeah. a bit all over the place. So, a bit like the new series. A bit like the new series, a bit like uh, Still on Earth. Too many people. Uh, so one of the first things we notice is when we first... It all starts off with Lady Painfort, doesn't it? And we get a bit of spill about her. No, it doesn't, actually. Yeah. I tell a lie. No, it starts, it starts off, off with, with the Nazis. With him. That's right, yeah. So it starts off trying with, to shoot a parrot. Trying to shoot a parrot. <laughs> trying to shoot a parrot. Uh, that just to to prove, Wagner. Yeah, just to prove that he's evil. Mm. Uh, he's going to kill a poor defenceless parrot, so we know he's a baddie straight away. Um, and so we we find out that he is in fact a Nazi, and that they're after this bow and arrow and all that kind of thing. And then how do they know about this? It's just meant, I think it's, I think in Doctor Who land, it's just meant to be like I think it's probably meant to be one of those secret legends that oh, right, kind okay. of like a Holy Grail type oh, thing. Oh, fine, okay. But, you know, but I, I think that's. I always wondered how they knew about it. I, I think that's probably the right, idea. Okay. Um, so. I then I think we see Lady Painfort and get a bit about her, and then we get we come back to the present and we see the Seventh Doctor and Ace uh, listening to Courtney Pine yeah. uh, at a live jazz session. And the first thing we picked up on is that in this story, the Cybermen have two uh, 
like, well, they're henchmen. Yes, yeah. Who are under cyber control, um, who try and assassinate the Doctor and Ace right at the beginning. And it's a good little sequence yeah. of shooting and stuff. Now, they, are, they have these great big earphones on their head. They are also at the concert. Now, the thing we thought was, surely someone there would go up to them and say, could you not be so rude and take your earphones off when you're listening to a live jazz concert? Um, and why didn't they just shoot him, an ace, when yeah, they were sat there? Yeah. Why wait until they get up and move to that nearest yeah. TARDIS? It doesn't matter. Just shoot it? them in the crowd. Yeah, no one, yeah. No one's going to do it. Yeah. They were, yeah. Seems strange. Yeah, it does seem strange. They get attacked, uh, and we've got this really cool sequence in the water, that's all quite nice. Uh, and then we find out about oh, the Nemesis statue of the, with the boom box, isn't it? Yes. And we, the Ghetto Blaster. Yeah. And we find out, oh yes, this is coming back to Earth, Earth is going to be destroyed or whatever. And uh, back in olden times, Lady Painfort and her henchmen come to the future with some sort of black magic, hmm. they, magic potion they, or something. Yeah, that's right, it's a yeah. potion, isn't it? Yeah. And so uh, they, I think they just move through time. Isn't the, the cafe, that's meant to be the same, the same place, place, but in the 1600s. Yeah. In the, yeah. Um, but what we laughed at with oh. this bit was when they materialise in this cafe, uh, the extras just sort of go, ooh. Yeah, well, that, have a little natter to each other. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, if it was me, I'd have ran out like, yeah, people, what the hell's going on? Yeah, you know, these people <laughs> have just appeared out of nowhere in period dress, all this like and under the waitress just lightning. sitting in the background taking orders. Yeah. That's even more f hilarious. So, I mean, I don't know if they were actually extras or if they were just people who were in the cafe and they just said, look, could you just pretend to act shocked? I don't know. They had to be. They must extras, have been extras, sort of. but surely they could have said, you know, yeah, run. I don't know. I mean, I, I would have said, oh, they obviously didn't want to do, maybe they didn't want to do damage to the place, uh, you know, if they yeah. running around. But Lady Painful does put a chair through the window. Yes. So they and Lily herself. To, yeah, she nearly falls through it as well, it's which quite is quite hysterical. One good point that we have to mention about this story is the special effects in terms yes. of, like, pyrotechnics and things. We have some really, really impressive explosions. The, the Cyberman... Battle yeah. with the soldiers is very, very that impressive. That is excellent. That's really, really Much good. Much better than the ones these days, I reckon. Yeah, probably. Generally they speaking, couldn't, <laughs> they didn't have health and safety, so they could blow yeah. people up. True. Um, so that <coughs> is very good. And like when the the Nemesis statue arrives on Earth, mm. and it blows up this huge crater. That huge explosion is really impre and impressive. And when it takes off at the end, yeah, it's, like, it's, it's also all it's good. Really, really good stuff. The only the only poor thing I think is the Cyberman ship. Yeah, that doesn't look so good. But I suppose it's nature of the time. Yeah. Isn't it? But, uh, I think it looks good in certain shops. I think the design of it is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah the design is like good. Like the model's good. Yeah. Every, oh, and this is also the first time you see the TARDIS, when it materialises, actually creates a bit of a draft and blows the candles out. The candle blows out? I hadn't realised that until we watched it together. Yeah, which now in the new series, it, all the time. it always creates a bit yeah. of a wind, yeah. you know, or well, most of the time. So people are sort of used to it now, but back then that was the first time mm. it ever happened, mm. which is quite interesting. Noteworthy, uh, isn't it? Yeah, it was, you know, it was a nice little touch. Mm. Everyone is after this statue, basically. Um, the Germans have got the bow, Lady Painfort's got the arrow, and Sylvester McCoy's got bugger all. The, they all arrive at the site where this statue has landed, which is where the Millennium Dome would later be built. Uh, which is now the O2 Arena, um, and the police arrive because obviously there's been this huge explosion, mm. and when they get there, they're killed by this toxic gas that mm. comes out of the floor, and the audience is led to think, ooh, what's all that about? Uh, but when the Nazis arrive and they see all these dead policemen, uh, the, the sort of second-in-command Nazi says, Oh, look, the, the police, who, who did this? And then the, the main Nazi is like, ah, oh, that, that is not important. Yeah. Now, hang on a minute. Surely that is extremely important. Surely you'd think, well, hang on a minute. Who killed the oh, police? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something fishy is going on here. You wouldn't just go, for irrelevant. Never mind, we'll just yeah. carry on. I don't think he was probably a main Nazi no. during the Second World War. He was probably the, the tea boy. And yeah. Just thought, oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll start it up by, myself. So when the Cybermen arrive, um, you know, the, the Doctor and the Nazis have a bit of a chat, 
And then the Cybermen arrive, and that's all very cool when the Cybermen ship lands. But also it's noteworthy, at the end of that part, Professor <laughs> McCoy's chain, which should be on the left, it's actually on the right, they've flipped the image. So look out for that next time. That's a bit sad, isn't it? I know, but that's because I like Professor McCoy. Carry on. <laughs> you were saying you should have brought your costume along. Yeah. <laughs> Dressed up. Um, that would have been funny. Oh, no, there is. <clears throat> yeah, so the, the entrance of the Cybermen is really cool, and, you know, it's a nice... Cliffhanger and you think, yeah, oh, it's very good. Um, and they look good as well. I think they look very good. They do look good, actually. I like the Simon um, and Sophemesis. They, yeah, they do look good. So we have that really good fight scene that we've already talked about, the gunfight between the Nazis and the Cybermen. Sadly, the problem with this is... Oh, and even Sophia McCoy get some good sort of stunts in. You know, yeah, that big jump yeah, into, yeah, yeah. into the little pit yeah, yeah, with Ace. So fair play to him. Um, so there you are, people who think if you're an older Doctor, can't do any action sequences. Not true. He did a lot of things like that. He did, actually. Battlefield? Yeah. Cus Fenric? Yeah. Lots of jumps and... Because uh, he was a very physical... Yeah. Because he was a clown, sort of wasn't he? That's right. But the only issue with that fight is, and the issue that everyone has with this story regarding the Cybermen, is that they are so weak. Hmm. Yes. Their... Uh, their uh, weakness to gold has sort of become, you know, completely overblown. Mm. When you consider stories like Earthshock, when Peter Davison scrapes the star in the cyber leader's chest, it doesn't actually kill him, it just sort of weakens him, <coughs> and it takes yes. several blasts of a cyber gun to actually kill him. Yeah. Um, sadly, in this story, all it takes is a little golden arrow in the chest, and that's it, they're dead, and then later on some gold coins, and that's it, they're, they're yeah. dead straight away. Yeah. They're shit. Mm. It doesn't really make sense. You'd think, well, no. hang on. Although the side leader just pulled out the... He survives. ...from the chest unit. That's it? true. Uh, but generally speaking, all the other ones just throw a bit of gold and they're, they're down, mm. down for the count. So it's a shame that they did that. Uh, and I think that's probably one of the benefits the new series has in some ways, is that they've... Although they do mention the gold thing time to time, from mm. time to time, it, you know, they've sort of said that they don't have that anymore. Mm. Which yeah, I think in some ways is kind of good because otherwise I think people could fall into that trap of oh well um, a wedding ring's not gold but if someone had a gold wedding yeah. ring oh don't worry I'll just punch him in the chest yeah. and he'll die straight away yeah. you know? um, so that is the problem with the Cybermen in regards to this story another problem I mean well it's not necessarily a problem is Lady Pingfort recognises Sylvester McCoy as the Doctor mm. Surely... One would imagine it wasn't that incarnation of the Doctor. Yeah. So how does she know it's him? Yes. Yeah, so maybe it's just his persona. Like, you know, there's something about him and she just realises... No one else dresses like that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe she saw the TARDIS in the background. And you had a TARDIS. Because the TARDIS is obviously... Oh, yeah, that's branded. true. So perhaps she sees that. I don't oh, know. It's, yeah, not, that is a good it's point. not mentioned, but no, perhaps that's what it is. Yeah. Oh, that is... Well, there we are. That's, that's, that is a solution. Well done. This story, after episode one... I think episode one is sort of okay. Episode one isn't yeah. is pretty alright, you know, <coughs> everything's set up and it all flows and you know yeah. what's happening. But then it's like episodes two and three, Ken Clark, I mean Ken, I believe that's his, the writer, uh, Ken Clark notoriously, uh, if you've seen the special features on the DVD, uh, goes on to say that when he wrote, when he went for the interview about coming up with this story, he made it up on the spot, this whole oh, really? story. Sorry, that's why it's shit, because he basically just went in and went, yeah, what What if Doctor Who was God? So that's why it's notoriously bad, and I think the the, the problem is with episode two and three, is there's lots and lots of padding, yeah. and the story doesn't really go anywhere. No. It's just a lot of yeah, true. wandering around, and, the, I mean, they all, all, all the characters suffer from it, Mm. And oh, yeah. lady, yeah. I mean, I mean, I think the bit with with Sylvester, even the Doctor, he's in that in and out that TARDIS so many times. Yeah. Off here and there, and it does get confusing. Yeah. What's he back here for now? Back at the you know the place where Lady Painfort was in the 1600s. Yeah. And then he's back. It's quite confusing, I think. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just <coughs> because they didn't know what else they could mm. really do. I mean, you know, you've got a bit like. I mean, as nice as it is seeing the Doctor and Ace just chilling out. On the hills, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> listening to the jazz, yeah, blocking the, blocking the Simon, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but one of the worst things from episode two of this story is the skinhead scene, yeah, which is just so awful and oh, it is just a 
appallingly bad, absolutely appallingly bad. Uh, I mean, it's just not funny. No. Uh, it's just, it's just not funny, and it dates it. It's really, really dated. Yeah. Know? It just, it, it's just naff. Mm. They really, I can't believe that they even kept it in. Yeah. Um, now all that sort of stuff with just Lady Painful and whatever his name wandering through the streets is a yeah. little bit like, ugh. I want to know how they managed to get those two skinheads up in that tree. Yeah, just the two of them. Just the two of them. Because I can't imagine Lady Painfort did it. No. Then maybe she used her black magic to do something, an incantation, perhaps. Well, maybe. Is it Richard? Is that her friend? Yeah, Richard, yeah. I can't imagine him single-handedly, because they were two big blokes. Yeah. Uh, well, he's might be a, like a murderer and a... Yeah, I know, but gosh, there's two of them. Yeah. But, you know, that's, the, that's, you know, beside the point, really. I digress. Oh, yeah, and then we've got another hilarious bit with the Cybermen, when the Cyber Lieutenant comes along and is like, oh, no, we should do blah, 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 blah. And the cyber leader goes, oh, you are working outside your function. It's like, what, the ci this <laughs> cyber man has, like, his own ideas and opinion. I mean, you know, they're meant to be yeah. emotionless, uh, you know, all of the same sort of... Ilk. Yeah, you know, mm. all of the same mind. Mm. And this one's like, actually, I don't think this is a very good yeah. idea. And he's like, whoa, you're, you're overstepping the mark, mate. So I don't think King Clark quite got the Cybermen that well. Mm. And then, oh, and then there's that other brilliant bit as well, when uh, they they go to the crypt. Yeah. They? Lady Painfort goes to the crypt, which is where the statue is buried. Yeah. With her own bones, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and she goes a bit apeshit looking for it, and the Cybermen think that she's going nuts, but she isn't. Well, she does go yeah. crazy, doesn't she, towards the end of the story. Richard and Lady Painfort see that the side men are coming and they try and keep them at bay with mm. their bows and arrows. And so they fire an arrow into, into, the, the, ground. into the ground. Yeah. And a Cyberman comes along with this little gold right. detector yeah. and goes right up to it and is like, oh, crap, gold, get, get back. back, keep back, <laughs> gross. We might die if we're, if we're in the close If we vicinity. accidentally fall over and impale ourselves on this golden <laughs> arrow, then we might die. The whole bata battalion of us. <laughs> it <Yeah>. is pathetic. <laughs> then we have another cool explosion when Sir McCoy tells Ace to blow up the Cyberman ship. Mm -hmm. And for some reason the Cyber Leader thinks that it's their two human henchmen who have been who are brainwashed from part one and they say, Oh, betrayal and shoot them. How could they betray the Cybermen if mm. their brains are augmented to be it's, under control? It doesn't make sense. So it doesn't, yeah, it's just ridiculous. Doesn't make sense. Obviously they didn't want to go, Christ, we can't have those two blokes in the, sh in the ship and they yeah, blow them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, can, we need to sort of tie up yeah. why they're even in it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, yeah, it is, doesn't, it's not doesn't particularly work, logical. Really. But. Yeah. Right, yeah, and this is another thing. Going back to the to Lady Painfort and Richard firing off arrows from the crypt. How the hell could they, with a couple of boat, with a couple of arrows, hold back an entire army of Cybermen? No. You know why didn't why didn't the Cyber Cyber leader go? Why? Well, you go go yeah. in there up the stairs and take them by surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mad. It makes sense. It is completely right. insane. Uh, it makes the Cybermen look very weak in this story. Yeah, they they are shit. I mean, I they think, look they, they appear to be very weak. I think the, the problem. I mean, basically, and I know a lot of people say the same. The Cybermen haven't had a good story since like 1982 or 1981, whenever Earthshock, Earthshock. came out. Yeah. Uh, you know, that was the last really good Cyberman story. Even in the Five Doctors, the scene with the Cybermen, they're hopeless against that. Rust on yeah. warrior but, I mean, robot. I don't mind that so much because it's meant to be that it's like the ultimate killing machine. That's, yeah, that's I, 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 I don't mind that so yeah. much. But e but in, even in stuff like Attack of the Cybermen, they just like, the, the, a man with a bat can just like knock their head off, <laughs> yeah. or, like shoot a Cyberman <clears throat> in the mouth and their head explodes. Mm. Uh, it's all a bit. Mm. I mean, Attack of the Cybermen, which I've already reviewed, um, it's okay. It's not a brilliant story by any means. It's mm. just all right. It's mm. just an easy viewing. Yeah. But yeah, I think Earth Shock is definitely the only. Decent story from the eighties for mm. Cybermen, even mm. though they were in it quite often. Um, and then we haven't really had no. a good Cyberman story not at all since. I know a lot of you will probably disagree with that, mm. but um, Christ, if the last one is anything to go, I by. haven't liked any of the Cyberman stories since it came back. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't. I think a lot of people said that in the twenty-first century, the Cybermen have mm. 
people, the writers haven't quite. I don't know. For some reason, writers just can't quite get to grips no. with what they're about. No. Despite the look of them, I don't know the look of them anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they just. I mean, against the Daleks, they're hopeless. Yeah. We've already said that Lady Painfort starts going a bit crazy. But she does go a bit OTT with it, isn't she? She yes. sort of goes, mm, she's yeah. like really. Yeah, she does. Ma uh, really going mental. One of the issues with this era of Doctor Who is that a lot of the guest stars just thought, oh. Ham it up. Yeah. I mean, Richard Bryars, God rest his soul, um, in Paradise Towers. He, he died recently. Oh. Uh, yeah, he, I mean, he's terrible in bloody Paradise Towers. Paradise Towers. That is just a tr appalling, yeah. appallingly over the top. Uh, in both parts, and not so well, not so much when he's just crying on. It's different, isn't it? Because I suppose he's supposed to be this. Yeah, but it's ridiculous. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> it's just for fact's sake. I'm just trying to show a contrast between his other self and okay. What well, fucking Pando? <laughs> the Cybermen are back in the crypt. See, I'm confused already. I'm confused as to why they're why yeah. they're why, no, no, they just swap locations one minute. They're in the crypt, then they're not in the crypt, then Lady Pingford's in the crypt, and the side men are outside, and then the side men are back in the crypt. Oh, isn't it because scene? the doctor does something and the. No, no, oh, I haven't got to that bit oh, yet. This is what I'm about to talk about. Sorry, alright. Um, and then Sylvester McCoy comes in with the, the arrow, with the, was it the bow and the arrow? Um, just the bow, isn't it? I can't remember. It is just the bow, yeah. because Richard threw the arrow in the. Thing. That's right, he did, yeah. So, so they've, by, got, they've got the bow, haven't they? Yeah, so by this point, the statue, which is in the crypt, has the arrow and it has the bow. What I probably should have mentioned is that it needs the arrow and the bow mm. to activate and be all powerful and all that kind of thing. Uh, Ace and the Seventh Doctor run in with the bow, and we have this. It's, it's a nice sequence, but it's a bit silly with the passing the bow around. Give and, me the bow. Yeah. <laughs> Take the bow from him. Um, yeah, it's a bit daft, really. It's nice, but the only problem is because it's such a confined space. They could have got them easily. Yeah. The side, they're, they're like, ugh. Ugh. Yeah, it's. For goodness sake. It's true. Come on, give it a bit of bloody welly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a nice little. Uh, it's a nice exchange. And I think I mean, if it had been a bigger space, it would have worked better. It would have, they could have actually yes. darted around a bit. Yeah, that would have been better. But sadly, Sylvester McCoy is about this close. Exactly. <laughs> and the yeah. side of him is like, mm. yeah, <laughs> it's true. Doesn't work very well. But it's yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's fun, but it's yeah. it has it's slightly flawed mm. in so much as where it's location. Yeah. yeah. Then we have even more bloody padding. Which is that daft American woman in the limousine. Oh, yes, yeah. So we've got Lady Painfort and Richard are hitchhiking on the road, and some American woman in a limo thinks, oh, yeah, I'll pick them, pick them up. And it all turns out that they're, like, somehow... Their families knew each other back in... the a connection. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's not funny. No. I suppose, is it meant to be funny? I don't really... I don't know, really. It's just a bit of padding, like you say, isn't it? It seems. It's just all we can get this American woman who I think at the time, or had been by that time, quite famous. She was a famous actress, yeah. And you know what John Nathan Turner was like, Ooh, we can get so and so, just shove them in there. Mm. Sadly, this has had a detrimental effect on the story. Mm. But it is just. Well, it doesn't help the plot right in any way. No, it doesn't do anything. It, it just gets them from wherever they are to where they want to be. Yeah. So it all comes to a head in the warehouse where the Nemesis statue first arrived. Right, and we've cocked up here. So hang on, the statue arrives on Earth, the Cybermen take it to the crypt, do they stick it in a coffin? Just for shits and giggles? Oh yeah, they do, don't they? They, they oh. take it there. Yeah, why do they stick it in the coffin then? Is it to drive them mad? What's the point when they just shoot the stupid cow? It's very unclear. It is poor. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Uh, I, I mean, I know a few... Unless I'm being very dense here, which is very possible. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah I yeah. mean... Yeah, we've been particularly stupid. Or oh, we just didn't pay enough attention, attention to, to the story. Yeah, it could be that. Yeah, oh, uh, well, well... Anyway, they're in this warehouse, aren't they're they? They're in the warehouse, the statue's there... Now who's got the statue now? Well, the Doctor's, the doctor's there first. It. Yeah. And he's now programming the statue to go off into space and destroy the cyber fleet. Yeah, there's a cyber fleet. That's the end of episode two. They're shrouded, aren't they? Mm. Um, 
and they've been invisible, and that's it. And so he, like you said, he programs the Nemesis, Nemesis statue to fly off into space and blow the whole lot up. Yeah. In the meantime, a load of Cybermen come to try and retrieve the statue. Yeah. Ace goes along, gets a slingshot, and fires gold coins at Cybermen's chest. Yeah. A nice little action sequence. Yeah, but again, it's ridiculous. I mean, she gets every single one, and they miss her all the time. Yeah. And, she, and they've and, got uh, a gun. It's just stupid. And then, again, there's a lot of being in confined spaces, which means it would have been even Going more... Going up the stairs, I mean, that little sequence, they should have got her yeah. easily. There's a lot of moments where it's edited in such a way that it just seems like by the time Ace has picked up her coins, yeah. gone like that, aimed and actually fired, this Cyberman could have shot her about a thousand no, times. It is, it's a bit daft, really. Um, so, it, uh, yeah, it needed to be cut pacier, but they probably mm. were leaving stuff in because it was going to underrun, and then it was going to be too long with yeah. any of the other scenes kept in. You know, it's a nice action sequence. That is one of the... Yeah, the, it does look good. Yeah, for the time. Uh, and then we have the bit on the gantry, don't we? And then yeah. a Cyberman falls off yes. and blows, blows up. up. Yeah. That's really cool, and she kills the cyber leader, so we think. Well, the, well the, no, 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 the Nazis are there. Oh, the cyber leader. The cyber leader then comes along. And kills them both. Kills them both, yeah. Right. So then he's so then like, oh, the no, the statue was mine. And then Richard and Judy come along. Richard and Judy come along. <laughs> um, yeah. And she's there going, oh, yes. mine, oh, mine. space and time. Yeah. Yeah. And then the story like, oh, she's insane. Yeah. <laughs> you have respect for my lady, whatever he says. Yeah. <laughs> no, she is mad. <laughs> she is mad, yeah. The doctor's got to decide, mm. who is he going to give the statue to? Is yeah. he going to give it to the Cybermen? Is he going to give it to Lady Painfort? Mm. And so he goes, oh, but not to you, the Cybermen. Before, before you mention this, oh, I, think not probably, yeah. well, I, think, I think the thing you ought to mention first is the fact that she now, in, in her attempt to try and get it given to her, she tries to black oh, yeah, the doctor. Oh, yeah, 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 I thought that came afterwards. afterwards. Yeah, that's beforehand. Oh, well, God, good job, he's here. You know this story better than I do, because I don't like watching it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So we have that very famous mm. scene where... And it is important. Yeah, where she says, oh, I'll tell, reveal your secrets. I'll tell yeah. them of the, of the old time, the days on Gallifrey and all this yeah. stuff. And, uh, that's all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's all very good, and it's like, what's going on? Yes. So the Doctor gives power of the statue to the Cyber Leader. Um, unknown to the Cyber Leader, the Doctor has already programmed the Nemesis statue to destroy the Cyber Fleet. So he doesn't know this, the Cyber Leader. So Lady Painfort, going apeshit, Decides to dive into the statue. Well, I don't understand that. I mean, does she, does she with it? dive into it of her own free will, or is it? I always thought when I first watched this story that she was sort of like drawn into it. I don't know. I, I'm completely wrong. I, I'm mean, sure. I don't really get it to be honest with you. Yeah, but, I, um, I always thought she just went shit mad and was like, no, my statue, and just like dive into it. Maybe, maybe that's, that's what, it what it is. You're probably right. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, let me know. Uh, so that happens. Answers on a postcard. Yeah. Don't do that these days. No, you don't. Yeah. Answers on an email or a text. And the cyber man, the uh, cyber leader, fires it off into space, and we see it take off, and that's quite cool. Yeah. And it blows up the cyber fleet. Yeah. And then the cyber leader is like, "You shit! <laughs> you <laughs> bloody betrayed us! <laughs> you tricked us, you gobshite!" Yeah. And so he gets, he's about to shoot the doctor. And then we have another one of these. If he, if he if he hadn't come out with a bloody monologue about it, well, yeah. it's not even that. He was like, "Well, prepare to die, Doctor." And he's like, oh, "You will join us or something." So yeah, I, I can't remember. That. And then he's like, "Yes, well, it's been worth it." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, not really cheesy like that. Yeah. In which time Richard has had like a ridiculous amount. He's of just time. put the kettle on, yeah. had a cup of tea, <laughs> and then he walks to the TARDIS door and takes the arrow out <laughs> and and just, attacks the cyber yeah. leader and Why kills him. Why did to shoot him? Well, he must have saw what he was doing. Yeah. It's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, and so he stabs the cyber in the chest, and he's like, oh, well, there we go. Well, oh dear, I'm stuck in the, in the present. And in the 1980s, yeah. Yeah, and McCoy's like, oh, don't worry, I'll take you back in time. So he does. All of a sudden, this also makes no sense. This man, who is a convicted murderer and a thief, we know this because Lady Painful says, oh, I employed you because yes. of your crimes. Yeah. All of a sudden, she, he's like, they're saying, oh, don't worry, I'll entertain you with, the, <laughs> with, with this fair maiden playing yeah. the harp, playing the flute. If he's this bloody mad... It wasn't prim- the harp, I think. What, is she playing like a lute or something? Lute, I think it was, yeah. Uh, 
yeah, you know, and she's... <laughs> it's just... Yeah, he's like a Pennyworth, wasn't mm. it? It's just mad. Surely if he's a hardened criminal, that makes no sense. I thought she was a midget, that woman. <laughs> well, they're not say midget anymore. Oh, sorry. You better yeah, then... cut that, because I might, I might offend some of your listeners. <laughs> Next time you watch that story, have a look. She does look... a bit odd. <laughs> Maybe it's just the outfit she's wearing. Maybe. I think she's just little and it's just all poofy and she's yeah. trying to grapple with yeah. this <laughs> instrument or whatever. Yeah, and then we end with... Oh, and we haven't mentioned the chess set. Oh yeah, the chess set obviously is very, very significant because obviously later on in Cus Fenric, in the next season, uh, Fenric talks about this very story. Yeah. And basically says that he planned it all. Yeah. So we've got him to thank with this shit. <laughs> yeah. So we've got a sort of a story arc in a sense, but not in the sense. Yeah, it's not present day. Yeah, it's uh, a, it's a loose. It's a very yeah. But uh, well, so it goes back all the way to Dragonfire. It goes back to Dragonfire, correct? When Ace first appears. But yeah. we'll talk about that with, when and if I ever get to review because of Emmerich and hmm. those stories. Um, and if you ask me back, and if, yeah, to help. If you want him back, <laughs> to break the rules. We're playing chess. Ace beats him and he gets pissy. And she says, oh, but, yeah, who are you? And the Doctor just goes, Shh. and it's the end of the episode. And everyone at home went, thank God for that. <laughs> uh, now, I know a lot of people are probably going to hate this, but I'm glad, I'm glad, actually, that in some ways, because, you know, normally I'm quite positive about classic series stories. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I know I get a lot of stigma for saying, oh, well, you like all the classic series stories, mm. but you hate every new series story. Yeah. Which isn't the case, because, you know, I've actually said a few new series stories, like Cold War, and, uh, yeah. and other ones that I actually quite enjoyed them. Um, but I'm glad that I got to review this, because it just goes to prove that I don't like all no. classic series stories, no. and this one is down the list mm. for being a crap one. Yeah. Uh, and it's not one that I would... Like. Although it's got elements it's got like. Yeah, but it's got good bits. Um, I think part one's the strongest episode, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but otherwise, yes, yeah, it's sh shite. Mm. Well, what, do you, what would you give it out what? of ten? You grid it out of ten, I yeah. grid it out of ten. Um, I would probably say Silver Nemesis should be worth... Um, five? Do you reckon? Yeah. About average? About average. Do you reckon no, I, think, you, I think it's or less. Well, I mean, this, well, I'm just asking you. What do you, what do you think, personally? Because yeah, I know you I mean, prefer it more than I do, I expect. Well, you know, it's not, not, it's not one of Sylvester McCoy's greatest stories. No. Um, but, and, it's not, uh, and it's definitely not one of his worst. No, no, no. There are a lot I mean, worse in the previous season. Season 24, I can't yeah. bear it. It's yeah. probably one of the worst seasons of Doctor Who. Mm. Um, well, the new series. <laughs> See, he's as bad. Will I get sick for that? No, yeah. No, probably. <laughs> um, <laughs> four. Three. Really? Is it that bad? I really don't like it. Gosh, <laughs> I wouldn't say it was that bad. Oh, I, I, I just, I can't, I find it difficult. If you're going to give that three out of ten, what on earth are you going to give Paradise Towers? Paradise Don't Towers? Don't you no, well, the, well, Paradise Towers is like one of my most hated classic series story. Yeah. I absolutely Hate that fucking episode. Have you reviewed that one? No, I haven't got it on DVD. I won't. I have spend money on it. Right. Okay. Well, I'm going to say I'm going to stick with five. I think it doesn't. I don't think it's worthy of anything higher than that. But I don't think it's that bad. So I would say five out of ten. I'm going to give it a three. Maybe a three and a half, just to be nice. Because I do think it stinks. You don't do nice. <laughs> <laughs> just be honest. No, 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 no three. <laughs> three. Okay. Yeah, so there we go. So that that, that is Silver Nemesis. Um, good first part. The rest of the story falls to pieces. Very confusing as to who's doing what, why they're actually doing it. I think the story would have worked a lot better if we got rid of the Nazis. Yeah. They didn't really. They didn't do it. They didn't add to the plot at all. No, it just confuses them really. Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, and just have the Cybermen. Hmm. Or better still. Don't write the story, write another story. <laughs> yeah. Get someone else to do it. When they bring someone good back to write the anniversary, they get Terence Dix to come along and write a Cyberman story. Mm. Something good. It's true. Oh well. There we go. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, no, thank you for, for ah. joining. It was a pleasure. Very good. So, yeah. if you were really good. Good. if you enjoyed Jonathan's thoughts and feelings on Silver Nemesis, and you'd like him to come back and review 
some other stories. Maybe we we'll get you in for a new series story. Oh gosh, well you know, <laughs> I don't really remember any of the new series. I watched them once and that's all. I just can't stand them. <laughs> I've got Human Nature and the Family of Blood next. Now, I always remember that being quite a good one. That's, on That's with the clock. The yeah, 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 yeah. Which obviously was, that a, was all right. a prelude for the Masters return in that yes. season, which was very good. Mm. So, well, the first couple of parts were all right to that Master story. Mm. Yeah. Tell us what you thought of this story. Do you reckon I'm being harsh? I mean, Johnny's being harsh. Mm. Um, I mean, you were slightly more favourable to it than mm. I was. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you do enjoy this story, please explain why, because clearly I can't see any merit in it at all, uh, apart from the cool explosions and fights, mm. uh, and the Cybermen look quite cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so give give us your opinions, let us know, and if you think Jonathan should come back and review some different stories, then uh, we'll see what we can do. So, thank you for watching, thank you Jonathan for joining me. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, well, I'll see you next time.